during those days when you're just browsing about crunch, crunchy roll and then you go, oh, here's something that's adapted from something that I've already read. Maybe I'll give it a few episodes and see how it transfers. Hey everybody, this is My Profile is Great. Ah, my throat's kind of a little bit croggy. Maybe I should have taken a drink of water before I did this, but I'm already recording. So let's talk about Mysterious Girlfriend X. I had done a manga review to this previously before, you know, it was even an anime or even before I knew it was an anime. This was one of those that I had always hoped that they would do a really good animation adaptation of it because it's a manga with a lot of potential to like sort of expand the storylines because there's a lot of faults with the original comic book. Basically the premise is sort of like this sort of socially awkward kid meets this socially awkward girl, like really, really socially awkward girl, and they kind of fall for each other, and they ha start having this psychic connection, and this is where it gets really weird, through the saliva that they share. So he's able to like feel her feelings about things and kind of her thoughts through the transmission of the saliva, so she'll kind of stick her uh, finger in her mouth and kind of, it, it's, it's ugh. It's kind of gross when you really think about it. And I was hoping that maybe they would have had more fun with the adaptation with the material. It feels like, from what I remember re reading, this is pretty much a straight adaptation, almost note for note, the same scenes and everything. Which is fine, because I like the original comic book. It was really a very awkward read, because it's one of those where I feel like, okay, if I was like 13, or 16 years old, this would have been something that I could have really dug because I could really relate to sort of being in that particular point in time where everything, you know, having to do with the opposite sex or sex in general is really kind of awkward and an undiscovered frontier. Now that I've grown, you know, quite a bit, it's interesting thinking about that particular time of your life and how awkward things were and how that first girlfriend was really so exciting and there, all this was new territory. But you don't get that same feeling from it. It's more kind of like, oh, this is really cute. Uh, I'm enjoying it. It's kind of weird hearing like kids this young talk about like the fact that, oh, you're going to be my sex partner someday. There's something in my mind that just kind of goes, that's creepy, that's creepy, that's creepy. But then, you know, everybody had that point. Everybody went through that. So that's more just me looking at it from the perspective of an adult and sort of reasoning through it. So what makes this anime work? What I think works with it is that it doesn't really have this horrible kind of like misogynistic, per, super perverted viewpoint of the relationships between the young boys and the young women within the school. Sounds weird, but in a lot of anime, I kind of feel like the guys are jerks. Most of the time they really are. They're kind of like porn addicts who just sort of fantasize about women all the time and oh god I wish I had like a really cute really hot girl and then suddenly like some hot girl shows up out of the blue that's super interested in them and then they'll sort of passive aggressively be a dick towards them at some point or another you don't get that with this character he's sort of bland he's not really that interesting but he's really kind-hearted he's a good guy he tries to do the very best that he can and also on her side of things she can be kind of a bitch in the most straight out way that you can say it. You know what? There's these points where you kind of feel like, okay, he went over to try and hug her and she flips out and starts attacking her, him with her scissors that she keeps around. Really strange thing when you think about it. The fact that this girl kind of has these scissors tucked away under her skirt, but whatever. It's a very strange show, but she's also very kind hearted. And I think that she, they help each other out. They have this sort of mutual connection other than just the saliva. And the saliva can be a metaphor for just about anything that you want it to be um, regarding sex. There's a point where she becomes like so happy from something that he had said 
that she starts like vomiting out saliva. No joke. It's like really creepy. It's really disgusting. But <laughs> the really creepy things help to make it interesting and actually help to make it a bit more honest than something else that you would find. Because they don't, it's not directly sexual, but everything is kind of so hyper-sexualized that it perfectly represents what it's like to be a 14 or a 15 year old kid. So if you're that old or you have the mindset of being that old or you just want to rediscover just how awkward that particular point in your life was, I would recommend Mysterious Girlfriend X. It's funny, it's charming, it's really cute, and it's also slightly disturbing. It pretty much summarizes anime in a nutshell. So, Mwah. Go check it out for a few episodes and see if you're disgusted or not.